Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another service online here at St. John's. Hopefully and prayerfully, this should be one of our last. Uh, my encouragement to all of you is to keep praying that our God will be over us, providing us protection, and that we can be together once again sooner rather than later. Uh, with that in mind, however, we're still going to be together, uh, though not in the room. We are still one in Christ and able to worship him together through song. So let us sing together to our Father in heaven. Well, again, good morning and welcome to another service online at St. John's, hopefully one of the last. Uh, it's exciting still that we can worship together, even though we are apart, thanks to our, our Father's Spirit uh, that unites us all. Uh, I'd like to start the service off quickly with an announcement for all of us. Uh, it's two announcements. Uh, one is a, a sadder announcement uh, and one is an exciting announcement. Uh, our sadder announcement is uh, our children's worker, Haley, who has been faithfully working and serving us for the last uh, few years, uh, looking after the children of St. John's. Uh, she has been in discussion with us and has decided that she would like to finish up uh, in, on a uh, little bit into February. Uh, this is not something that was uh, sudden. We've been talking about it for a while and uh, praying to God where to go. Uh, and she has uh, made this decision along with talking with us. Uh, and so she, we are thankful to her for her work and we, are, we praise God for the people that he always provides for us to do the children's work here. Uh, that has meant when this decision was made a, few, uh, a while back that 
we uh, needed to find a full-time youth and children's worker. And so I'm excited for my second announcement, which is that the Lord has graciously provided us someone who will be coming on full-time uh, this week, in fact, uh, as our full-time children's and youth. Uh, now, I know this might seem pretty sudden. Uh, the reason that it feels sudden is because uh, a lot of this was done over the Christmas and New Year's period. Um, with not a lot of time and ability for us to communicate, we've all been sort of away uh, on holidays and things like that. But the decision was made just before Christmas. Uh, and so we didn't really have an opportunity to tell anyone. And then on, bo on Boxing uh, on New Year's Day, it was a very small service, so we felt it wasn't appropriate then. Uh, so we're telling you now, uh, we're going to get to know this guy in a minute, so we're going, I'm going to actually uh, hand you over to a video that we've recorded to introduce you to our new children's and youth worker, uh, Matt. So let's go. Hello, uh, my name is Matt Carmody. And I'm Elizabeth. Uh, I grew up in Campbelltown. Uh, before moving to Wollongong where I met Elizabeth, uh, my wife. I, I grew up in Wollongong and met Matt yeah, at uni while we were both studying. Yeah, for the past few years I've been studying a um, Bachelor of Divinity at uh, Moore Theological College uh, and I'm excited to be joining you this year at St John's as a Youth and Children's Minister. I've also been studying at Moore College these last couple of years just to learn more about God and His Word, which has been excellent. Uh, I'm really excited to be partnering with you in discipling your youth and children uh, in knowing and loving the Lord. Uh, and I thought I might just let you know a bit more about me. Uh, a few things I like to do in my time off is I like to cook, I like to have people over, uh, I like to read and I like to play games. Um, and this year I have committed to working two days a week at my old job from when before I was studying and so I'm looking forward to figuring out how I use the rest of my time to serve God during the week. Um, yeah, I like to spend my time knitting, sewing, crocheting, etc. And uh, something unusual about me, uh, you might not realise, uh, is I really love a good bath. And one thing that people might not know about me is I once went skydiving. And we have two cats. Yes, we have two cats named Adolin and Renaro. They're very cute. Uh, well, we really look forward to uh, joining you this year and we'll see you on Sunday. See ya. Well, thank you to Matt and Elizabeth for that video. Uh, we're going to get to know them a bit more over the next few weeks. So hopefully once we are face to face, you will make them feel welcomed and loved. Uh, but until then, uh, we can keep them in our prayers. Uh, our verse of the day uh, comes from Luke chapter 14, verse 33, and it says, Any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Uh, Irfan will be talking to us a little bit about Luke chapter 14 uh, and hopefully expanding on that verse and teaching us what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Uh, but before we can do any of that, we need to come to our Heavenly Father uh, in confession to acknowledge our need of Him in our lives and our need especially of His forgiveness. So let us say together the confession. O Lord, our God, you know us better than we know ourselves. As we come before you now, believers and doubters alike, we all share a deep need, for we are all lost without your grace. Search us, O God, and know our hearts. Test us and know our troubled thoughts. Give us true repentance, forgive us all our wrongs, transform us by your spirit, and to live for you each day, to learn to serve each other, and through the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord, to come at last to heaven. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, but if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just and will purify us from all unrighteousness. Uh, it is a wonderful thing to know that our Father has redeemed us and calls us his children. And so with that in mind, we direct our hearts to him in thankfulness uh, through the thanksgiving. Uh, this is a call and response. Uh, so I don't have anyone to respond to me in the room, so it's going to be an awkward silence unless you respond with me. Uh, so let us say this prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious and generous God, thank you for providing all our needs. For family and friends, for enjoyment of all that is good, for the love of Jesus our Saviour, for his life poured out in sacrifice for us. 
Uh, and finally, before Ian comes and prays uh, and we have our Bible reading, uh, I'm going to say to you the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you today to give you thanks for the gift of salvation, given through the grace and the love of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. As we bring in the new year, we pray that the suspension of face-to-face -face church services will only be a short-term necessity and our normal services will return soon. Father, in your timing, bring, bring us our new senior minister with a fresh vision, energy and commitment to grow our church and to take us into the future. We pray for our branch churches, Mount Hunter and Morumbi. Father, guide them through this difficult time and help them to best prepare for the way forward during this COVID restrictions. We also pray for our Carrington leaders and may that may we have sufficient volunteers to fill these roles and be ready to resume services as soon as it is safe to do so. Father, may the goodness of the Holy Spirit guide us daily, helping us to love and serve you and our church family. We pray for the generosity of our congregation. May we be able to meet our financial commitments and be able to continue to supply the level of service that is sufficient to seek and save the lost, as well as serve the needs of our church. We pray for our men's and women's ministries. May they be well run and well attended by our congregation and offer an opportunity for our non-Christian friends to join in activities in a non-threatening environment. For our non-Christian friends and family, we pray that St John's will be able to help them to get to know God through our many activities that are aimed in making them feel welcome and included. We also pray for our pregnant mothers. May you help them to feel a sense of peace during this time, this sometimes difficult and emotional time. Father, thank you for hearing our prayers that we have brought before you today. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Hello, everyone. Our reading is from Luke chapter 14, verses 25 to 35. The cost of being a disciple. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It is thrown out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Morning. Well, last week, Tim, as he looked at chapter 13 of Luke, reminded us of the need to be confident with our gift of salvation, which is granted to us without cost to all who will place their faith in Jesus. And when it is accepted, then, like many gifts do, it will bring changes to the way in which we live our life. We will now live in a way that shows our thankfulness, ways that will be honoring to our Lord Jesus. Luke chapter 14 contains very interesting illustrations. Firstly, 
we see the healing power of Jesus even on the Sabbath. A prominent Pharisee has invited Jesus to his home specifically to trap Jesus into saying or doing something for which he could be arrested. And Jesus is not afraid to face them. Even though he knew that their purpose was to trick him into breaking their laws. Jesus shows them and he shows us that serving and honoring God is far more important. Then in the parable of the wedding feast and the banquet, Jesus explains how the kingdom of God is open, not to those who think they are good enough because of their status, but to those who know that they are not good enough and are willing to humble themselves and accept the invitation of Jesus to come. Jesus then closes off chapter 14 by explaining what it will cost to follow him in our life. And that is the section I want to continue to spend some time on today. Many believe that Jesus here is expanding the meaning of what he had said back in Luke chapter 9, verses 23 and 24, where he said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will save it. As I said, there are large crowds now following Jesus, many of them sadly to witness the spectac spectacular events that were taking place. And Jesus now outlines what it will cost to follow him in our life. We know that only a small number of these people actually do follow Jesus when the excitement and the spectacle ends. And sadly, it can be the same today. Many come to Jesus in the initial excitement of forgiveness, but they find that when difficulties and obstacles arise, when temptations and mockery comes, they too stop following Jesus and they turn back to their old ways the ways and rewards offered by this world appear to them to be more beneficial to those that Jesus promises are rewards that are to come. And those rewards will be for those who will believe and follow him in their life. The first point I want to bring to our attention is quite a difficult one. It's our willingness to give up everything to follow Jesus. Verses 26, 27. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Our Lord is not asking us to hate our relatives. That would be a contradiction to the fifth commandment, which is to honor our father and our mother. Hate in the Aramaic means to love less. That's what it means. It doesn't mean what we mean in our English language today. And Jesus here is asking us to love him more than anything or anyone else in our life. Jesus wants us to place him in a position that is above anything or anyone else in our life. That's reasonably easy to do when others around us have the same belief as us. However, it is not that easy to do when others don't. And that's why Jesus refers to it as our cross to carry if we are to follow him. It does cost us to stay faithful to Jesus. Often, the greatest hindrance to our walk of faith will come from the oppo opposition of those we love. 
whether they be our husbands or our wives, our sons, our daughters, our relatives, our friends, our colleagues. How often do we find ourselves facing opposition from those we love, especially when we do want to do something for Jesus? And when that happens, it's not always easy to deal with, but it should not surprise us and it should not stop us from following Jesus. The big question we need to ask ourselves if and when this happens is, am I more willing to offend my family and my friends than I am to offend the Lord Jesus? Sometimes, as I said, it's not easy to make these decisions. I can remember when Barbara and I were called to go and leave our family, our church family and friends, and serve God in Tasmania. It was not at all easy to do. It caused a lot of hurt, and it really, a lot of displeasure in our family, in our church, and in other areas of our life as well. However, we believed our Lord had made his call perfectly clear to us, and so we continued on and we went. Had we not gone, we would not have experienced the amazing ways in which our Lord resolved that hurt that our family members felt and others felt. We would not have experienced the amazing things that our Lord did in the life of the church that we went to, and especially in the people who came there. Had we been unwilling to give up on many things and follow Jesus as he asked, we would have missed out on what had been and still are some of the most amazing times in our life as followers of Jesus, as we witness God at work in and all around us. There may be times when our Lord calls us to give up things that hinder us from following him as we know he wants us to do. Times when he calls us to do things that need to be done, even things that might appear risky. Some may even appear to be impossible, and some we know are going to cause upset. Following Jesus means a total submission to him, listening carefully to the call he is making, and then willingly setting off, following the path we believe he has asked us to go down. As I said, it may be a pathway that is easy, but it may be a pathway that is hazardous and risky. And it may be a pathway that we are not even sure where and how it is going to end up. But these are not good enough reasons not to go. Jesus will never ever let us down when we completely trust, rely, and depend on him. Jesus is telling these crowds, and he is telling us today to follow him. And we need to be willing to let go and allow Jesus to show us his will, his purposes, and his plans for our life. This is how they, and this is how we, show we are truly willing to be his followers, no matter what the cost. The second point I'd like to consider is our need to be wise and count the cost. Verse 28 to 30. Suppose one of you wants to be a builder. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Well, why did Jesus say this? The proud were probably thinking that after all they have seen, 
the spectacular things would happen for them as well. Often when we are excited about something, when our emotions are running really high, we can make rash decisions and often fail to find that they turn out as we expected them. Sadly, some can even inflict pain and hardship. Jesus is telling them and he is telling us that we need to be careful, thoughtful and prayerful before we charge off and do things with an expectancy that all will happen just as we have planned. In our Lord's Prayer, it does not say, my will be done, it says, thy will be done. So we need to seek and then wait on the Lord to make things clear to us as we plan and then as we take steps to serve and follow him in our life. Our world offers a lot, but what they are offering are on foundations that are shaky, weak, and dangerous. Yet so many fail to realize this. Do we realize this? Jesus gives us eternal foundations on which to build our life. And he himself is that foundation. At that time, at times we might be shaken, but there is nothing that will shake or break us from that foundation unless we ourselves choose to move away from it. This principle applies to us both as individuals and it also to corporately as God's church. Jesus wants to build us all to be responsible and dependable followers. He wants us to be dependent on him, not on ourselves and not on others. He also wants us to know how to be wise enough when we are to believe and when we are to follow him. And when we do, we should expect him to provide all that we might want, not all that we might want, sorry, but what we will need to achieve what is to be done. To be followers of Jesus is more than going to church once a week. It is to listen, to hear, and then follow the voice of Jesus every day of every week. This is the solid and the eternal foundation on which we are now meant to build our life. Jesus didn't want to turn people away from following him life. Jesus knew that a wholehearted commitment and dependency on him would be needed to withstand the hardship, the trial, and the temptations will come on those who do choose to follow him. Jesus himself experienced it, and so will we. Jesus knew even then that there would be nothing more harmful to the gospel than people who go backwards and not forwards. People who are unreliable and not reliable in the way in which they live their life of faith. That saying, it's more often caught than taught is a very important one. The ways of Jesus need to be seen to be alive and living in us by others. Are the ways of Jesus seen to be alive and living in us by the way we live, by the way we speak, and by the way we act, in both good times, but also the difficult times of life. Our Lord Jesus walked the talk, and many saw it and they wanted it. And when Jesus is seen in us by the way we speak and act in our life, it's a visible testimony to others. And it's something that others should desire for themselves. Are we willing to pay what it costs 
to follow the ways of Jesus in our daily lives? The answer to that question will show how wise we truly are. And the final point I want to consider today is the consequence of choosing not to follow Jesus. Verses 33 to 35. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciples. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It is thrown out. Once we do be follow Jesus in our life, we cannot look back at what might have been. We have and will always need to be willing to give up whatever it is that comes to hinder us from following Jesus in our life. We must not allow ourselves to become backsliders. We must continue on to be striders for the gospel. Many Christians today just want to blend into our world and want to avoid the cost of standing firm for Jesus. Jesus here is telling us that if Christians are losing their saltiness, they have become worthless. Like salt flavors and preserves, followers of Jesus had to be flavorsome by living in a way that preserves the good news that Jesus has made known in our world and keep it from being spoiled. That means we need to be committed to Christ's work, to be salty and preserving the ways of Jesus are not going to be easy. But if we as Christians fail to do this, who else is going to do this? When we or others fail to reflect Jesus in our world, we are failing to follow his example and we are failing to do what he has called us to do. Notice Jesus here is not aiming this comment at leaders alone. He says, any of you who will not give up everything cannot be my disciple. Jesus is challenging all believers to give him first place in their hearts and in their lives. Our age, our status, our abilities are not good enough excuses for us not to do that. The big question is, will we? I personally don't believe it's optional. I believe it's an essential requirement for anyone who wants to become a faithful follower of Jesus in this world, he has to have that preeminent place in all that we think, all that we say, and all that we do. This passage is a really challenging passage because it is calling us to see the importance of following Jesus in our life, irrespective of what it might cost us. I trust we are all willing to rise up to the challenge and we are all willing to do what we know Jesus is calling us to do. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for sending Jesus into our world to teach us and show us how to be faithful followers. Help us to realize how important it is to willingly follow Jesus in our own personal lives. Help us to be willing to let go of the things that might hinder us from following him as we should. And enable us to always persevere and preserve what is true and what is right. And help us to be the flavor of Jesus to all who come across our pathway. In Jesus' name we pray and for his name's sake. Amen. Our Urphon has challenged us in what it means to be a true disciple of Jesus. Uh, we can take what we have learnt and heard and prayed and worshipped God today and dedicate it to him in our prayer of dedication. So let us say these words together. Heavenly Father, we have heard your word this day. Give us grace to receive it, understanding to know it, faith to believe it, and in the coming weeks, the will to obey it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
And finally, we say the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. That concludes our online service. Hopefully it will be one of the last. My encouragement to us all is to continue to pray uh, for a quick resolution to the the struggles that are currently going through New South Wales. Uh, But until then, let us worship God one last time this week in song. Thank you.